Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep um, Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes because um, I don't know, just sleep. Do I have to explain? <laughs> because uh, falling asleep is not a good idea when you need to have your eyes open. I think that's kind of sums it up. I could. Uh, Just uh, just look at my fire fire tablet. Yeah, still can't get used to how to use the lemon thing. The only reason I got it here is because I wanted to. I want to go to my website. Because I've had a couple of uh, I had a review today. Yeah. It says, this is from Erin. Uh, Nothing else puts me to sleep so quickly. I look forward to listening to your podcasts and to be disappointed and and do be disappointed the days you don't upload. Thank you very much for your service. P.S. Don't stop the yawns. They make me tired. And there's a little laughter um, emoji. So thank you, Erin. That's very kind of you. And I read Kisses one out, didn't I? And and I read Pow's out. Poo? Pow? I'm not sure how to pronounce. P-A-U. Pow, pow, and so as I said before, if you like what I do, leave a review. Ideally, leave a video review as well, because that would be particularly groovy. And the only way to the only way to do the the well, I suppose it is the only way to do that, but. The way to do that is to go to my website, jasonnewland.com, and just click on the review page in the menu. Or you can go all the way down to the, on the home page, right down to the bottom. (laughs) I think. I think. And you can, it says custom reviews, zero for some reason, even though there are. But not just on the home page, you can write and review. And. Oh. oh. That doesn't give you the option to put a video. That's weird. Why is there no option for a video? There must be on the, the. The review page, surely. Uh. So write a review. Well, that's weird. It's not given the option to make a video. It's just saying put your name, email, rating, give your review a title and the review and submit submit review. That's strange. This should be a... Yeah. How weird. Because this should be... You should be able to leave a video review. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm paying £10 a month for that. To have that service. So I better look into it. Either that or just cancel it. I don't want to cancel the reviews, but cancel the the extra money I'm paying. Huh. 
I should have to look, unless it's just not coming up on this, on the, no, it shouldn't be any different, should it? It shouldn't make any difference where, and if I put in Google, Google Chrome, Google Chrome browser, okay. So if I download Chrome, no, I don't want that. So Jason Newland, the um, oh, okay. If you like what I do, leave a video review. So let me click on that, write a review. doesn't give the option. How strange. I don't understand that. I realise I'm getting caught up in this, but I'm a bit, uh, a bit, I've never been so angry. <laughs> I don't know, this is really strange. So let me see. Let's go to the apps, the apps. Where's the apps? Weather, help, settings, contacts, camera, audible, app store. That's be the one, isn't it? So I should be able to download um, Google Chrome. Google Chrome app. So I'm going to get that. Download. Search engine. It's installing. So that's done. Open it up. It might play differently on the Google app, on the Google Chrome, compared to the Silk, whatever it is that's. You know. Know what that silk is? It's like a search engine called Silk. Okay, I'm still not the number. I'm on Google Chrome, I'm not at the top yet. One, two, three, four. I'm four down. So let me go to the video review here. Hmm. Write a review. Nope, still doesn't. I'm going to have to look into that, am I? I'm very surprised, honestly. Very surprised at that. Hmm. I mean, it's lovely to have uh, written reviews, of course, but it's like, what on earth? What on earth, earth, earth? So, um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to ignore that for a bit. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can actually see what's around me. <laughs> my eyesight isn't that bad, actually, but I've got an idea what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I've got on my Amazon Music. I'm going to tell you the songs and the albums that I've got, just to give you an idea about my life. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> I'm going to let you know the, the most recent albums that I've played. So, the most recent album is Cats, highlights from the motion picture show. And I'd really recommend it to listen to that. I mean, you can listen to it, I guess, on Spotify. You could buy the album as well. Um, I don't buy albums anymore. I just listen to it online. I used to have loads of albums when I was younger. Um, but I was listening to it. I'll get this. Here's a story for you. I was listening to it and I fell in love with it. Um, there's been a long... 
I don't know how to say it. There's been a long gap between me loving musicals. I loved musicals when I was a child. And then... I like the... You know, there's the occasional musical I like. And musical films that have music and singing in them. For example, um, Frozen... I've not seen the new Frozen yet, the Frozen 2, but absolutely loved the first one. The, what other ones? The thing is, when I was a young, when I was a young and at school, like a kid, a small child, musical films were very popular. And like Greece was, you know, up there at the top of the list for me. Anyway, it was the the best film ever. So I loved that film and every song in it, every single song. I even remember the album because my older brother bought the album at the time, which was probably nineteen seventy eight, probably. And it was a double album, and it had uh, pictures and all the kind of like the graffiti that was on the beginning of the, you know, the animations at the beginning of the film. So that's one. But also the, at the weekends, we used to have on television, lots of the old musicals would be played. You know, the old country and westerns that had musicals. Was it Paint My Wagon? Seven Horses for Seven Witches. Uh, Piddler on the Roof. It's, you know, it's so many different. Um, the Sound of Weather. It was uh, Mary Hopper. It's, it was very, it was lots of different films that had music that were from the 60s and the 50s and even the 40s, you know, like this, um, the old, uh, what's his name? He was a dancer. Well, it was Big and Crosby, but there was a the dancer, wasn't there? And all those, like, musicals, there was hundreds of them that would be on television on Saturday afternoons, maybe on BBC Two, for those that didn't want to watch sport and then it'd be on Sunday afternoons on perhaps all the channels various different ones The King and I you know with um, uh, Kojak playing that part and there was what other musicals was there well, of course later on there was a Grease 2 which with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer on it and she, that, that, well, I, I, I quite like the film actually. It, if you forget about the original, um, the second uh, Grease was okay. It's a bit like watching The Karate Kid 3, or the one with the girl in it, or the one with, you know, it's. If you forget about the very first one, it's a great film, perhaps. I've never watched it, I don't know. Or even the one with um, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's son in uh, the one that was about 2010, I do believe. Wow, 10 years ago. And... I didn't watch it again. I watched a bit of it. Had a date with someone. And uh, we were going to go to the cinema. And we we got to the cinema, but it was closed. Or the, the films were already started, so we didn't go. And she said she needed to go 
and get some light bulbs. And I thought, wow, this date's going really well. It was a, it was a, yeah, it was a good, good date. So we went down the hill to, what's it? What was it? And it's not there anymore. It's near where, it's next door to where the old blockbusters used to be. Uh, which isn't there anymore either. Just across the road from where the shoe shop used to be, that's not there anymore either. Um, haven't been down there for years, but I used to go down there a lot because my college was there. Not my college, you know, the one I attended for three years. And the. I used to love that Blockbusters. Not love it, I liked it. The only thing I struggled with was there was a lady that worked in there. Um, she started working and she was very enthusiastic. And she started asking, so I go in there and said, So, what are you looking for today then? What, what kind of film are you looking for? I'm like, go, go away, leave me alone. <laughs> Just, I, I didn't say that, but I didn't, I almost felt like I was being sold to, you know. And I'm one of these, maybe a bit weird, I don't know, but I can spend ages, well, not now, obviously, because video shops don't really exist anymore, but um, I used to spend absolutely ages looking at all the titles, especially in the old days when there were videotapes, I'd look around, I'd read the back of the cover you know, sort of, sort of read what the story was like, and <clears throat> I'd spend maybe an hour or so, maybe longer, looking through until I found one that I wanted to rent out. And you know, the, when I was a kid, the the video shop people knew me. You know, they got used to it. There's, I think it was a bit of a joke, really, because I, I go in there, and it, decisiveness. Was that an issue with decisive, indecisiveness, the decisiveness, or is it? I think so. It might be, in, might be decisiveness. It might. I don't know. I think I was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And so to, to, to choose a particular film that I wanted to watch, bearing in mind that especially when we was as a family, like the weekend, for the weekend when I was a kid, when I was, I don't know, about, yeah, probably 10 onwards, that's probably the the kind of time that the videos started to, the vid first video shop um, was born in my town, probably about 1980, maybe 81. And uh, it was the highlight, it really was. We'd go to the video shop and we'd, I didn't always go along, sometimes I'd, you know, they'd choose the films and but I'd always be excited because it'd be we'd always get more really than we should have done. You know, it was not that we should have done, but it was nice. I've always the more the more the better. So we usually end up with about four films, sometimes six, and sometimes two. But it was always more than one, and. I used to get so excited because back then if you were waiting for a film that's been at the cinema if you don't get if you didn't get to see it at the cinema there'd probably be about a seven year wait maybe longer before it was on television that was about in in my country I mean I don't know what it's like in other countries I mean 
you might still be waiting for films you might still be waiting for the original Star Wars I don't know to come on your telly I don't know what it's like where you are but um, <laughs> it was a long wait a long long wait and and by the way if anyone wants to complain about the chair squeaking there's nothing I can do about it I'm not a statue I can't afford to get a new chair so I'm stuck with this squeaky one I do try and keep as still as possible but I can't I can't just keep frozen you know I can't I just stay in one position the whole time because I'm alive so yeah and I used to get so excited at all these videos so because you get to see the film it might be about a year after it was um, on tele on uh, the, the movies I was just put my sleeves down we're getting a bit chilly in here now Maybe two years, I don't know. I mean, when the videos first came out, it was a lot of old films. You know, when the video short store started, there was a lot of old films, you know, all the stuff that was already on TV. Uh, the old westerns, the... Um, just films from like the 70s and stuff and then you know over time the shops started investing and getting the the most up to date films and it's very expensive for them it was um, I remember them telling me that it cost hundreds of pounds just to buy one one copy of a movie so they had to make the money up they had to rent it out as many times as possible to get that money back or maybe it was £70 or £50 or third, maybe £20 I don't know but it was they had to you know um, I'm making it up I don't know not, not making up the story but I'm making up the facts the financial aspects because I did have a conversation with um, well if you spend hours and hours and hours in a video shop every week you kind of you're almost like a member of staff <laughs> you're, just, you're just there so they'd get to know me but not, not like personally I wouldn't like discuss I, don't know, I wouldn't talk about like fashion with them or ask them to do my homework or you know or talk about you know political or political stuff but what I did is kind of got to know them a little bit you know sort of they say oh you right I said yeah and maybe because I knew that I was especially about the age of 13 when I started getting into karate uh, karate they would always like sort of like, oh we've got a new martial arts film we've got a new one new kung fu film and uh, they used to let me have the adult ones as well like the the adult Kung Fu because a lot of the some of the martial arts films were X rated not because of um, nudity or anything like that but because of the the fighting and stuff I suppose but they let me have them anyway because they knew I was a karate boy and yeah it's good never told anyone yet never told anyone until right now or I can't believe I've just told everyone about the law being broken in 1984 
36 years ago. Ooh. Isn't it really weird to think that these young people, that were young men, in their 30s probably, perhaps just early 40s, late 30s, with these businesses, are now pensioners. And it weird. And it's weird to think that I'm actually sick. Well, no, I'm not because I, I I can retire. I think I can retire when I'm sixty-eight, which means I've still got nineteen years left to be unemployed. <laughs> left to work and it's weird isn't it when you think about it so 19 years on one level that's not long but on another level it's a lifetime you know before I can even collect my first pension payment. 68, it used to be 65. When I left school, the retirement age for men was 65. I'm pretty sure it was. And the retirement age for ladies was 60. Now going further back in time, the retirement age for women was 55 and I think the retirement age for men was 60 I think but then it does depend on what kind of job you do so and some careers can retire at an earlier age I think police pretty sure that police can retire at 55 again I might have made that up I've got an idea in my head that bank managers can retire at 55 as well or 50 or 55 but none of that really makes sense so I might have dreamt it Yeah, probably didn't happen. Yeah, it used to be earlier. It did definitely used to be earlier. Because my nan retired when she was about 32. That's what it used to be like back in her day. But she started working at four, full time. So, (laughs) she'd... um, I don't think my nan ever worked full time. She might have done, but I think, you know, because she had about 17 children, she was busy. She had her arms full, you know, uh, at the very least. She was a very busy person, very. But she did work as well. She was always worked. Uh, had like part time jobs cleaning jobs I think during the war she would have been she had one child during the war already so she had a baby and and she was I guess she was working in the ammunition factory as well like a lot of people because this country was pretty much run by women during the war, during the Second World War, because most of the young men were abroad, fighting. So the women had to run the country and do the jobs and look after everything. So the men might be the ones out there winning the war, but 
the women gave the men something to come home to. Plus, the women, the women, the, you know, the ladies, the females, the female of your population, were also... God, it's boring, isn't it? They were also producing like the ammunition and all that stuff. But there's lots of men here as well. Lots of people that were too old to go. People that were... And I think if you... You weren't allowed to join the forces, I think, if you had certain issues. I don't know if it's like eyesight or hearing, or if you had asthma or something like that. Um, I'm okay, not making this up, but there were some some conditions which wouldn't stop someone from working, but would stop them from... Uh, it allowed them to live a long life, basically, than they would have possibly. How do we get on to talking about the Second World War? So, yeah, there must have been a way I got here, I don't know how, but, oh yeah, retirement. I'm pretty sure and I might be wrong but I'm pretty sure my granddad retired at 60 <clears throat> the reason I say that is because he retired at 60 because <laughs> I know he did and the reason I believe what I'm saying is possibly true is because he moved with my nan into the house that me and my family were living in when we moved they moved there in 1980 1978 1979 around that time and my granddad had just retired I think Is that right? Yeah. yeah, it sounds right. And he and he was eighty in nineteen ninety one or nineteen ninety. So yeah, so I'm 20 years earlier he was retired so he, he was definitely retired before he got to 60 Andre's being annoying now running around just randomly running around how how can I make noise how can I annoy him how can I annoy my dad he's just running around randomly He's been asleep nearly all day and now he's got all this energy. It's a proper <sighs> He makes me so angry. <laughs> he doesn't. So yeah, it's, I don't know what the uh, pension retirement ages are where you are. I mean, there's going to be some places where there isn't such a thing as a retirement or a pension. And I do wonder if that's going to happen here. So it might be 68 now, but when I get to be, by the time I'm 60, they might have changed it. So it's 72 or something, you know. So I'll just... Uh, I think this is what I do here. I might just have to. I got to, got to be way of earning money somewhere for my pension, just to top it up. Yeah, what could I do? I suppose I could be. 
who knows? I mean, I, I, who knows what what will be happening there? By the time I'm that age, I could be anywhere, couldn't I? I could be, I could be in Spain or in Wales or in. Um, I know there are other countries. I just can't think of any. I could be in Brazil or Brazil as have other, other places um, what's the other place similar to Brazil not similar but it's kind of for some reason and I don't know why I forget about Brazil even though it's a huge country with a massive population I still forget even though they're one of the most successful football teams in on the world scene Brazil have world, won the World Cup a fair few times I think not that I'm an expert on such things but I have seen something somewhere mentioned about uh, that particular uh, event may have occurred in the past regarding World Cup football and the Brazilian team of football players what's the other place so you've got Mexico just thinking of the Latin Latin countries Brazil see I'm trying to I'm trying to learn myself stuff Brazil. Let's have a look. Why? Why do that? Why not just go onto my tablet and have a look? That's got to be. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Google search. Um, Latin countries. Latin countries. Okay, here we go. Come on. Okay. List of Latin countries. This is Britannica.com. Latin America is generally understood to consist of the entire continent of South America in addition to Mexico, Central America, and the islands of the Caribbean whose inhabitants speak a Roman language a Romance language huh? whose inhabitants speak a Romance language what on earth is that? I'm going to click on that what are you talking about Romance language? Romance languages a group of related languages all derived from vulgar Latin within historical times and forming a subgroup of the Italic branch of the Indo-European language family. The major languages of the family include French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese and Romanian. Really? This is Britannica, by the way. This is not my words. This is what the the website Britannica is saying. Never heard that in my life. Never heard the, the name uh, Romance language. The people of this large area, we go back to the Latin America, the peoples of this large area shared the experience of conquest and colonization by the Spaniards and Port I'm not interested in all that. I just want to know what the well it is interesting. I should read it Colin. Okay. It's everybody else's fault. Okay, good. Right, let's back. This is an alphabetical ordered list of countries in Latin America. So, um North. Okay. 
North and Central America, Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, South America, Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, French Guana, French Guana, is that right? And then there's Guyana, Guana, Guyana, Guyana, Paraguay, Peru, Suriname or Suriname, Uruguay, Venezuela, and then you've got the Caribbean countries Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and then there's dependencies and constituent entities. I've got no idea what that means. Guadalupe, Martinique, Puerto, Puerto Rico, Saint Bartholomew, or Saint Bartholomew, Saint Martin. Wow. Oh, I don't like this learning new things. I don't, I don't feel right. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to learn new things every day. <laughs> so let's see what it says. Let's have a look at Belize and see if it gives us a little bit of information about how many people are there. No, it's not. Head of state. Official. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is Belize. Official language is English. The Prime Minister is Dean Barrow. The capital is Belmopan. The monetary unit is Belize dollar. B BZ and then the dollar sign. Population, this is the 2018 estimation. 398,000. So it's a very, very small country, Belize. It's a, is that an actual country, is it? Or is it just a village? Yeah. Total area, square meters, or square miles. Total area, square miles. 8,867 square miles. Um, yes, this... Belize is often thought of as a Caribbean country in Central America because it has a history similar to that of English speaking Caribbean nations. Indeed Belize's institutions and official language reflects its history as a British colony. However its culture is more typical of that of other Central American countries. Belize's small population is ethnically diverse and includes a large portion of immigrants. Since the 1970s, migration has shifted Belize's ethnic composition from a predominantly Creole, again I've not seen that word before, mixed African and British descent. Creole population to one in which mestizos in Belize people of mixed Mayan and Spanish ancestry 
make up half of the total, total inhabitants. Where did they get all these names from? I'm going to click on Mystios. This is written by the editors of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Just letting you know that I'm not really making this stuff up. This is what it says. A mestizo, plural, mestizos, feminine, mestiza, any person of mixed blood. Okay, that's everyone in the world, isn't it? I mean, a man and a woman have both got different bloods, haven't they, in their body? So the baby's going to have a different blood. It's going to have a mixed, surely, is it? I don't know, I'm not an expert on genetics, but that seems to be what I understand to be possibly true. Uh, in Central and South America, it denotes a person of combined Indian and European extraction. In some countries, example Ecuador, it has acquired social and cultural connotations. Okay, so it's, yeah, so a pure-blooded Indian who has adopted European dress and customs is called a mestizo or cholo. In Mexico, the description has been found so variable in meaning that it has been abandoned in census reports. Okay, so I think there's probably some swear words in there that I didn't realise, or some kind of uh, insults to different people, or that people might use, so I do apologise. I've got the first I've ever seen that in my life. So I don't know about stuff like that. And so that's Belize. Let's go back to or other ones. Cost actually what I want what I'm interested in is I'm interested in the, the amount of people. So Costa Rica. There's a lot of information here. You could almost learn stuff. You know? Right, Costa Rica. Official language is Spanish. And there's an estimated population uh, 5 million and 4,000. So... Five million and four thousand. Which isn't a lot, is it? That's uh, it's less than half the population of London. London's about 10, 11, 12 million. It's hard to know, but... Okay. So if we go back, that's Costa Rica. El Salvador. I guess they're all going to be small then, aren't they? I mean, small as in um, population, but possibly not. Oh, this is a bit bigger. So, San Salvador is the capital of El Salvador. It's Spanish is the official language. The estimated population is 6,646. Six million six hundred forty six thousand and total area square miles eight thousand one hundred and twenty four oh. population male um, night wow really oh no I was going to say <laughs> I thought it says Male population, 90.3%, and the female population, 86.3%. <laughs> it's like, how did they manage that? I mean, even my maths could uh, realise that that's possibly not right. The 
the female life expense expectancy on every single one I've seen so far is a great deal higher than the male. In this one, this is the highest. So the male expectancy, seven, life expectancy at birth, 71.6 years. For the men, female, 78.3 years. That's based on the average, by the way. It's not... I want to know what the population is between men and women. Because uh, I might need to get a girlfriend one day. So it might be worth travelling. If, if I can find a country where it's 94% women, I might have a chance. So that's El Salvador. Be no good going somewhere where there's no. Well, I don't speak Spanish. Guatemala I don't know why I think Guatemala I just think of Guatemala it's food isn't it Guatemala isn't that food it's like you dip you dip you dip chips into it so capital is Guatemala City um, Finnish oh yeah Spanish is the official language again Total population. Wow, no, it's growing now. Seventeen million three hundred sixteen thousand. So yeah, that's uh, total area square miles forty two thousand four forty two thousand forty two total square miles. Um. I don't know how to work that, to be fair, how to work that out. So that's Guatemala. What's the next one? Honduras. Honduras. So Honduras is... Capital is Tegucigalpa. Tegucigalpa. I'm not probably not pronouncing it correctly, but I don't care. Tegu, tegu, tegu kipalka, kip, tegu kigalpa. Yeah, it's quite a difficult word to pronounce. It might be really easy to pronounce actually, but I'm, I'm not. They're not spelling it phonetically. It's just spelled how it's spelled. So, well, mind you, if I click on that. It might have a phonetic spelling. Wow. Tegasibigbalga is is the capital of the Republic of Honduras. It's located on hilly terrain hemmed in by mountains at an elevation of three thousand. 200 feet 975 meters above sea level wow so people that live there when they come to a, a place like England they're going to feel almost superhuman because they used to live in a high altitude so it's almost like Superman you know, when he comes from Krypton and suddenly he's got all these superpowers and that's what happens with them. So if you come from Honduras and um, you'll be able to run faster and for longer probably, <laughs> just like Superman. There's 9 million people, 9,008,000 living in uh, Honolulu, no, Honduras rather. And the population, uh, the total area square miles is 43,433. Or square kilometres, 112,492. Okay. So where's the next one? This is interesting. Mexico. This has got to be the largest one out of the lot, surely. So Mexico. 
official language, Mexican. Oh, Spanish. So, total population. Wow. There's a big jump. 124,786,000. Now we have here, in my country, about 66 million. So you've got twice the population. But the size of Mexico compared to England. Is, well, to be fair, the size of pretty much every country in the world. I don't know what percentage, but most of the countries in the world are bigger than England. And like land-wise, you know, land mass, space, measurements. Um, 124 million, 786,000. Now that, my friends, and they've done a, a population pro projection, 10 years time to be 138 million, five, uh, 757,000, so that's another 14 million. So yeah, it's a, that's a big, big country. So that's a Mexico. I, would, I mean, I'm probably wrong, but Brazil might. I think Brazil is bigger than Mexico, population-wise. Anyway, I'm just focused on the population. I can focus on the the measurements of the the size, the land mass, another time. So we're now into Nicaragua, Nicarag, Nicaragua, or was it Nic Nicaragua? I don't know. Uh, capital is Managua or Managua Spanish again those Spanish those, that language was very popular in that area wasn't it um, population 6 million 461 thousand so it's a very small but it's quite a big uh, 50,337 square miles. So it's quite a big landmass. I'm, I'm just trying to remember in my head. So it's a fairly small population though. So that was now Panama. Panama's quite small, I think. Population wise, I've just got a memory. A memory of something I've never looked at before. Panama City is the capital. Spanish is the official language. Monetary unit, Balboa. Rocky Balboa. It's named after Rocky, the monetary unit. That's good, isn't it? And what's it? Population is. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. 4 million under 63,000. So yeah, it's fairly small. I mean, four million. I mean, it's, you wouldn't want them in your garden, would you? But you know, it's it's still a lot of people. Four million. I don't mean you wouldn't want people the people from Panama in your garden because I'm sure they'd be lovely. I'm just talking about four million people or in your bathroom. You know, it's a lot of people. But when it comes to a country, it's not huge, especially with some of these in this area. Now, Argentina, I don't know why, but I thought it was uh, not like a small country, but I didn't think the population was particularly big. So let's have a look. Argentina, the capital is Buenos Aires or Buenos Aires. Official language Spanish, monetary unit 
peso, peso, and the population 44,495,000. Wow. So this is South America, Bolivia, next. Bolivia. Um, capital La Paz or La Paz how could it's got two capitals so La Paz and it's got in brackets administrative and Sucre or Sucre S-U-C-R-E in brackets constitutional there is links but I can't even bother to click on but I don't know what that's all about Wow, look at this, right? Bolivia, official languages, Spanish, and 36 ingenious languages. Wow. So they're, they're, they've got their own genius languages. 36. Uh, monetary unit is Boliviano. I like that, that's cool, isn't it? Bolivia, Boliviano. That's a good name for money. How much will that Mars bar be? It'd be one Boliviano. Yeah, I like that. How much did you earn last week? I earned 300 Boliviano. Oh, it's almost romantic, isn't it? So population for Bolivia is 11,307,000. So that's Bolivia. Now we're going to Brazil. Now in my mind, Brazil is huge. Partly because I watched a documentary where there was a lot of people there. I was just I was just surprised at how many people I was seeing and uh, wow I wasn't wrong either I'm just looking so Bolivia um, uh, Brazil is the capital is Brasilia official language Portuguese and the population 208 million. 495,000 so I think Mexico was at 146 million wasn't it I think uh, so Brazil is the biggest one so far I think not that it's a competition but now Chile or Chile Chile Santiago is the capital Peso is the monetary unit and the population is 17,787,000. Huh. Oh, there's a lot more to learn here. I forgot what, what was it, Chile? I said Colombia's next. Colombia. Bogota or Bogote. Is it Bogote? I might have pronounced that correctly. I might, I might, I might have pronounced the first thing correctly ever just now. And you know why? Because there's that little, um, Andre, will you shut up? Andre, shut up. It's got that little dash above the A, Bogote. Is it right? Bogota? Bogote. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't think I can get into trouble for that. It's just... I hope not. Please don't. Official language is Spanish. Peso 
is the monetary uh, unit. Population 42,771,000. Oh my goodness. 440,831 square miles. Square kilometers 1,141,748. Huge, huge, huge country. That's massive. I don't know if it is, but it sounds big, doesn't it? I wonder what Brazil was. I'm all excited now, I've got to go back to Brazil. Let's take back to Brazil. What was the size of that one? The size. Wow, even bigger. 3,287,156 square miles. Or, no, it's square miles, yeah. Or square kilometers is 8,515,767. Now that's big. Can't argue with that. Brazil. Colombia. So Ecuador. That's the next one. Let's have a little drinkies. <clears throat> yeah, I've just come to the conclusion that I could actually start learning some stuff. In fact, I have. Just doing this, I've been learning stuff which I didn't really want to. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't want to learn new things. So this one is Ecuador. Cueto, or Cueto, Cueto is the capital. Spanish is the official language. Monetary unit is the US dollar. Population 16,770,000 and 98,985 square miles or 256,370 square kilometers. So it's, yeah, it's not like a huge, um, population so much seven but still I wouldn't say no to having everyone there listening to our podcasts. Imagine if I had everyone in in where was it? Oh I don't know where it was. Where was it? Ecuador. Was it Ecuador I was just looking at? I need to take a bit more notice of what I'm doing. Or is it Colombia? No, it was Ecuador, wasn't it? Because 17 million. Yeah, 16 million 770,000. That's Ecuador. Yeah. So if I had 16 million people listening to my recordings, that's just one country. It's a tiny percentage of the world. But I would be... Yeah, if I had 16 million people listening to me every day, it'd probably be the most popular podcast in the world. I kind of... Well, it might not be. There might be podcasts that have those kind of figures. I don't know. I suppose there might be. But, you know, most television programs would love to have that kind of figures, wouldn't they? 16 million people watching. So I doubt there's many podcasts to have that. So it'd be interesting if I just... So everyone in Bolivia, or wherever it was I was just talking about, Ecuador, rather, everyone in Ecuador, if you can please... Listen to me every day. Thank you. So we've got French Guana. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. French Guana. 
Territorial Collectivity France. So I'm guessing the capital is Cayenne. Cayenne. Official language French. Monetary unit is the Euro. Ah, oh, it's only a tiny little population. 287,300. I mean, that's... That's probably double what's in my town. So it's a, a tiny, tiny little place. Well, population wise, anyway. Then there's Guyana. 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 Looks like a big slice of. Uh, wow, it looks huge on the map. looks absolutely massive but it's a very very small population again Georgetown is the capital English is the official language Guyanese dollar is the monetary unit and there's only 746,500 yeah, in there population so that's quite low now Paraguay I think this is another small one isn't it maybe not Paraguay capital is Asuncion official languages Spanish and Guarani our oh, population is yeah it's not, not tiny population 7 million and 54,000 so not like a huge population, still less than London. So what's the next one? Did I just I've already gone to Paraguay, haven't I? Did I go to Paraguay? Yeah, I've already done that. Uh, the next one is Peru. Isn't Peru big? pretty sure Peru's a big place it's on the coast according to that map um, capital is Lima or Lima official language is Spanish Quichua Quichua that's locally and Ayamara locally monetary unit is Nuevo Sol Wow, yeah, I knew it yeah, is a big cunt. Wow, it's massive. <laughs> it's a very big cunt. Population 31,358,000. I say massive, but, you know, compared to some of the other little, little ones. But it's square metres, 1,000, not 1,285,216. So that's that one. Suriname. I've never even heard of this one before. Basically surname but with an I added. Suriname. Capital is Paramaribo. Dutch is the official language. Population 580,400. There's got to be a small island. Well, those 63,251 square miles. 63,000. So comparing that, um, I think it's a big place. Uruguay. Now, Uruguay is a big, that's a big place, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. You all know Uruguay, isn't it? Not Uruguay. Uruguay. Or Uruguay. That's up to you, really, isn't it? We can pronounce things how we want to. I think, uh, and this, this, the capital is Montevideo. 
I wonder if they that's where they got the word video from official language is Spanish population is 3,507,000 Okay, Venezuela is a huge country, I'm pretty sure, pretty, pretty sure, according to this map, it's massive, but, um, so it's Caracas is the capital, Spanish is the official rural language, and yeah, 31,828,000, so still less less than half the population in my country but probably about a thousand times bigger so it's but it's a lot smaller population wise now we've got the Caribbean and this doesn't really make sense does it because the Caribbean is not in South America, is it? No, Cuba. So Cuba's class as the Caribbean. Okay. Cuba. Country, Cuba, country of the West Indies, the largest single island of the archipelago and one of the more influential states of the Caribbean region. Cuba, okay. Didn't know that. Um, capital is Havana, after, named after the cigar. Official language, Spanish. Monetary units, Cuban peso and Cuban convertible peso. I have no idea what that means. Population, 11,212,000. So that's Cuba. Dominican Republic. Um, capital Santo Domingo official language Spanish monetary unit Dominican Peso population 10,351,000 okay and then you've got Hattie Or Haiti. Capital is Port or Prince. Or make your mind up. Is it Port or Prince? <laughs> uh, monetary. Oh, official languages: Haitian, Creole, and French. And monetary unit is the Gourd. Population: ten million seven hundred eighty-eight thousand. And then the last one, two, three, four, five. The last five. These are dependencies and constituent entities. So Guadalupe. Let's go to this one. Um, capital is Base Terror. Official language French. Monetary unit is a euro and a population 388,900. So that's Guadalupe. Mar Martinique. Martinique. No, it's not the right one. What are you doing? Yeah, Martinique. Um. Heads of uh, Fort de France is the capital. French is the language, official language. Monetary unit is Euros. Population 370,100. Next is Puerto Rico. Uh, um, okay, right, so 
This is um, capital is San Juan. Oh my goodness, I pronounced that correctly as well. I'll do it properly now. San Juan, Juan, San Juan. Official languages: Spanish and English. U.S. dollars, the monetary unit. And population: three million two hundred sixty-five thousand. Oh, we're getting near the end now. Saint Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Oh. I'm feeling a bit Bartholomew today. <coughs> a bit of Bartholomew. Um, okay. Oh, this one's not giving me any information. Nothing. Wow. It doesn't want to tell me anything about it. It's almost... Um, oh. Alternative title is St. Bart's. I wonder if that's what the St. Bart's Hospital is named after. It's just a little place. It's just a... Population 9,279. That's based on 2013. Wow, so it's very tiny. And then we've got St. Martin. Let's see what this one's. Another one, a little. Oh no, this has got information. Has it? Has it? Has it? Has it? No. No, it hasn't. A little bit. Population 35,107 in 2014. Again, it's just a little... I was going to say it looks like the... A hearing aid being put into an ear. A close-up. But I realise it's just an advert. So the picture of the place is... It's almost... Very green, beautiful, very beautiful. Yeah, that's all I can really say. It's it's like a just beautiful, beautiful place to live. Surrounded by mountains, mountains, but uh, yeah, it's not. Let's see if it opens the picture up a little bit bigger. No, I didn't. It basically, no, it doesn't allow that, so it doesn't matter. So that is all of. I want to look at Central America. What countries are in Central America? What countries? Oh, St. Bart's again. Oh no, it's a hearing aid. They're everywhere. Central America, southernmost region of North America, lying between Mexico and South America, and comprising. Yeah, just the ones I've already mentioned. El Salvador, um, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala and Belize. Geologists and physical geographers sometimes extend the northern boundary to the isthmus of Tehuantepec in Mexico. So let's have a look at North America. So what does that consist of? North America. Yeah. OK. 
Can you give me a list, please, of different places in North America without the hear and aid advert? No, it's not. And basically, North America, third largest of the world's continents, lying for the most part between the Arctic Circle and the Tropic of Cancer. It extends for more than 5,000 miles to in 500 miles of both the North Pole and the Equator. Equator. And has an east-west extent of 5,000 miles. It covers an area of 9 million 9 million 355 9,355,000 square miles um, not sure if I really understood any of that ok western hemisphere let's have a look what does it say about the western hemisphere hemisphere Ah. So South America, South America is the fourth largest of the world's continents. It is the southern portion, southern portion, and uh, generally referred to as the New World, the Western Hemisphere, or simply the Americas. Um, hmm. Isn't it weird, not weird, but how things, a landmass is so large that it ends up being practically in another country? Okay, that's not really a good sentence because <laughs> it's, a, it's a continent, so that would lead into another country, but. I knew what I meant. When I said it, I knew what I meant. And I, I'm sticking to that. <laughs> oh, dear. <sighs> so that's it, I think. I don't think I'm going to read any more of that. Oh, my goodness, I've gone way over time. So I'm going to go for now. Thank you for listening to me learn stuff that I'll fully forget. And I'll speak to you next time. Until then, which will probably be tomorrow, remember to be kind to yourself and to others. Because you deserve to be happy. And so do they. Lots of love.